Lonmin Platinum Mines annual Marikana commemoration is underway outside Rustenburg in the northwest. The ceremony is to remember the 44 people who died six years ago at Marikana. On the 16th of August 2012, 34 striking mine workers were shot dead uh, there by police. Ten other people, including two security guards and two police officers, were also killed during the protracted wage strike at Lonmin. Lonmin's commemoration is usually held as a prelude to the main event organized by workers' union AMCU. During the commemoration, during the commemoration, the company reflects what happened during 2012 and measures that have been put in place in ensuring that the incident does not occur again. The, the event will be addressed by Lonmin CEO Ben Magara. Well, for more on the story, we cross to our reporter, Olebukheng Khosilenswe, who's standing by for us in Marikana. Olebukheng, uh, what's taking place there so far? Good afternoon, Nompu. Well, um, the program is just about to get wrapped up here at the Lonman Conference Center. I must emphasize that we are not in Marikana, just we're just outside Rustenburg. Um, the commemorations that will take place tomorrow in Marikana, well, that, that will be hosted by AMCU, the um, union for most of the mine workers that were affected in the, that protracted strike of 2012. Um, but you just spoke earlier that 10 other people died um, in the days leading to the uh, 16th of August in 2012, two of those people being security guards. I am now standing by with um, one of the wives of those security guards. Her name is Aisha Fundi. She's going to take us through how her life has changed after that incident. Good afternoon once more, Aisha. I just would like you to take me through what happened to your husband and uh, where was he working? What was his duty? Okay, my late husband, Hassan Fundi, was working for Lone Min for security. He worked as a superintendent of security, Lone Min, which is, was a response supervisor. He was called for duty on Sunday, the 12th of August, as the Lone Min were having the, the problem of the strikers who were striking, and they wanted to ban the management offices. So on that day, my husband and his colleague, they went there. Unfortunately, they were not aware that the strikers, they were outnumbered by the strikers, because there were about 10 of them, and they had to deal with the crowd of 10,000 people. My husband was hacked to death by the strikers and they also burned them alive while and his colleague. And when we approach this week of leading to the commemorations of the 12th, I mean the 16th of August, how does it make you feel? What are the emotions that come to your mind, to your heart six years on? 16 doesn't mean anything to me because the people that died on the 16th, they, they, they killed my husband on the 12th. So the thing is, you will never understand because you are not in Marikana. If you live in Marikana, you'll understand. So this, the 16th is, is, is only celebrated by the people that were involved, what, what, that were the dead four people were killed. And they don't, they're not even inviting the other 10 people. We invited by Lone Min because Lone Min take this in incident inclusively because one incident led the other incident. And um, I heard you speak to me earlier off camera that um, there is no uh, union or, you know, I mean, working together between um, these, uh, the families of these 10 other people that died before the 16th together with the, the AMCU or the mine workers. Can you tell me more about what the relationship is there? We are the relationship is like uh, we it's like we don't exist. The the day four families receive provincial uh, uh, treatment like us. If you can see, no union is speaking to us. No. No politician is speaking to us. It's like we don't exist. That, that is why you see even today in South Africa, when they talk about commemoration, they only talk about the 16th. So that keeps on, on hating us. It hurt us because we cannot talk about 16, whereas we leave other people that were, were died before the 16th and killed by the people that died on the 16th. So we, we have a long way to go unless the, our state president comes in Marikana to sort our issues because we need personally him. He's the one who we, we, we believe that he can, solve, is, can, can sort the story of Marikana. And just tell me about the impact of losing your husband all those years ago. How has the family life changed? It has changed tremendously because my, my husband originally originally come from Malawi. He has also family defeat. He happens to be a siblings in Malawi. He was a main breadwinner. You know how Malawi suffers. I had the three kids with him. He had the three kids in Malawi. He was a main, main uh, 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 provider in the family. I had to come and learn me to work on his space, and of which I'm given the less job than he was doing. He was working as a superintendent, and I'm now working as a simple administrator, which is a 
a, a, also a gap of, of in our finances. I had to lose the, the lot of things, furniture, my house, my things were repossessed because I could not afford to pay things that we were able to, uh, to pay while we were working, all of us. And just tell me, how has Lonman helped to improve the quality of your life? I hear you say that they've given you a job in his space, but other than that, are there any other you know, incentives that they help, they give you to improve the quality of your life? No, the Lonman hasn't done anything except for that. They have a program that when somebody died on duty, they, 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 they call a family member to replace the person. This is the program that they've done for all of us as the widows. We're all working for Lonman. If you don't work as a widow, you have a son, you can work. So that's the only thing that they're doing for us. They also take our children to school with this trust fund thing. And the further than that, it was just like getting my husband uh, money, the pension money, of which the, the, the compensation part, no one, know, we don't know who's responsible, whether the government or loan men. No one is telling us what to do. Almost all of, all, all of the widows that are sitting in the hall. And today, though, even now that Lonman has invited you to this um, event, how does that make you feel? Does it? Do you get comfort out of it? We get comfort because we, we, at least we are aware that somebody is sharing our sentiments. Even if there's nobody who's sharing our sentiments, we believe that at least they are here and they feel they they they, they share our, our our sentiments. And that is what they are actually doing every year. They don't actually invite us. They invite everyone, but everyone has got the choice whether he doesn't want to come here he wants to come the one at the at the, the mountain so it's, it's up to the individual because we know that we are not invited at the mountain we always attend the one that is organized by the by the lone men Thank you so much. You. Um, there you have it, Nompu Aisha Fundi, you know, really emotional, talking about how she lost um, her husband there, you know, in the days leading to Marigana massacre. I must say that this is not the first call for President Ram uh, Cyril Ramaphosa to come and visit the area, to come and visit the community and um, the, you know, affected families, affected um, communities around Marigana. Every person that we have met around here has emphasized how d disappointed they are that the president has not come here even though they've called they had called unto him to come here before he assumed um, the office of the president and um, I, I believe that the uh, uh, recall I mean the proceedings are now wrapping up inside the hall um, and uh, as I said earlier it is going to be a very very short program with that it's back to you in studio Numbu. thanks very much Lebukeng. The Institute for Security Studies is releasing a new report detailing what happened on the small copy or scene two on the 16th of August 2012 when police opened fire on striking mine workers in Marigana outside Rustenburg in the northwest. Let's cross to the briefing underway in Pretoria where, where Judge Ian Farlan is currently addressing the media. More. I, I asked the questionnaire, we were running out of time, but I asked for questionnaires to be submitted to all the people who were at that, for, at that forum meeting answer specific questions which will enable us to find out what the reason was for this decision. The, we, the question that we asked could be summarized in one, two words. Why Thursday? The plan, the, the well worked out, carefully finessed plan being compiled with the benefits of public order policing experts couldn't be used on Thursday 